And on the count of three, when I say amen, all of us be gently seated, all right? One, two, three, in Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Somebody in. Check on us if you're doing okay. Test your heart rate. Test your heart rate. I just know that God is in this place. Anyone believes that? It's been an amazing few days of this camping, man. God has met us here. 
God is indeed made us here, amen. And I believe that He's not done yet. God is not done yet. God is not done yet, amen. And I believe that He is flowing in His place. He's continuing to meet every day. Come on. So ministry as one. Let's worship the Lord right now. Let's begin to fix our eyes on Him. Fix our eyes on Jesus. Amen. Now take a deep breath. Take another deep breath. Come on. Breathe out. Would you close your eyes all across this place? Just lift up your hands. Let's fix our eyes on the Lord. Let him rain down his love. Let him rain down his mercy. Sweep through this praise, oh God. Fill us with your spirit.
saying, Lord, I'll raise my hands when I feel like it. Let's not sit here and say, I'll raise my hands when I feel like my expectations have been met. Let's not say that, Lord, I will worship you when I'm good. Because, you know what? God is good all the time. Let's not say, Lord, I will only worship you when my circumstances are good because God is good all the time. Do we see this? Do we understand this? Lord, you are good all the time. Lord, we give this rest of the time to you, Lord. We're going to worship you with everything that we have, all that we have, 100% of our heart and so much more. Lord, we're not going to be afraid of stepping out into the water, but Lord, that is where you are. That is where you are, Lord. I don't want to be on the road where it's sin. I want to run after you, Lord. I want to run after you, Lord. After you Jesus. And that's what we all want to say. That's the portion of our heart today. And as we sing the chorus again, Lord, we're going to run after you, Lord. We're going to run after you and we're going to worship you with everything that we have.
wants to know that even if it doesn't feel like it, it has made a difference. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. Even when you don't remember the verse, the spirit man has grown. Even when we don't remember what has been spoken, something has changed. That is the Lord. So Lord, we cast our eyes to you. We would have none but you, Lord. And for time of all the rest of the days after camp, Lord, we just give you this next few hours. None but you, Lord.
to receive during the camp right all four days you come to every service and then you take notes and you read the Bible and you go home and you journal and you feel like it's really really hard to receive this camp for some reason or other it's just tough it's not easy I just want to show you a portion of scripture that can be found in Genesis 2 This is one of the first few words that, that God ever spoke to Adam. It says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden, you may freely eat. Freely. Freely eat. Freely. Freely. See, up to this point, right, Adam had not done anything at all. He hadn't tended the garden. He hadn't offered any sacrifice, nothing. But God's first words to him, right? Freely eat. No strings attached. But you know, it wasn't just at creation that God was so generous and so lavish with His giving. Would you like to know what happened even after the cross? Let's look at Romans 8. The Bible says, He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely, 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 freely give us some things? Give us a bit of things? No. Freely give us all things, all things, freely. You know, between the verse in Genesis and the verse in Romans, it's a few thousand years, you know. You know what happened between this time? Everything that man did wrong, everything that man, they sinned all the way from the garden, all the way to the time of Moses, all the way even to the cross, where they put Jesus up there. And look at the heart of our God. Even after all that, freely give us all things. I just want you to know, right, that it's not about how much effort that you put in. It's not about how, mu how much you try to receive. It's not about how much you serve. But the Father that we have freely gives us all things. Freely with no strings attached. Hey, V. You know, maybe you're hearing Nikhil and you feel like, that's cool. I know God's a good God, but maybe I'm not good. And maybe I don't deserve to ask. You don't know what I did yesterday. You don't know what I did last week. What I did before camp, who I was before camp. But I want to show you this little scripture in Numbers 27. It's about the daughters of Zelophehad. And it says, Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hefir. And these are the names, Malah, Noah, Hogla, Melka, and 
Chosa. They sound like nice names, right? So these guys are like sisters. There are five sisters here. But all their names mean different things. You know, one sister means sickness. And one sister means to be in a prison. Another sister means to be a queen. Another sister means the lightsomeness. And their names are also different, right? And I was asking God, like, oh man, if I was sickness and my sister was queen, man, that would be a real bummer. But a lot told me, right, that what's the what's the equal playing field? And the equal playing field tonight, right, is that they have the same father. And as they asked for the inheritance, right, they knew who their father was. So today, wait, one more, one more verse, one more verse. Let's go, next verse. Number seven. The daughters of Zalofa had speak. This is what God said, right? The daughters of Zalofa had speak what is right. You shall surely give them a possession of inheritance. You shall surely give them a possession of inheritance. So, if you wanna, wanna pray for you today, if you will lift your hands to me. right upon our hearts. We want to ask of you to help us dream again. We want to ask of you to replace who we think we are. We want to ask of you for healing God in this place. We want to ask of you for gifts. We want to ask of you to help us ask of you. God, we want to ask of you to open up our hearts and see who it is that you see us to be, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's all good to ask for ourselves. It's all good to receive for ourselves, right? But can you think of a, another time where over a thousand youths of God's house are gathered together? How powerful, right, would it be if we don't just ask for ourselves, but if we ask for our ministry? We don't just ask for arrow, we don't just ask for Vasti, we ask for the church. So right now, Daddy God, I just thank you, Lord, for everybody who has made it to camp. No matter how small or how large they are in number, I thank you, Lord, that where God's people are gathered, there the church is. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we ask of you today to make this ministry one that is accepting. Lord, not that it's just accepting of people who, you know, read the word, people who are generally quite okay, but accepting of everybody who comes and steps into the door. Father, I thank you that this ministry will be a place that we can invite our friends and our friends will feel comfortable. They won't feel like it's a weird place. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that this ministry shall always be one that is built upon righteousness. That whoever steps in will understand knowing that they are the righteousness of God in Christ. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we ask of you that for this ministry, we have the boldness to ask and to dream big things. Father, that we'll be able to ask things that are bigger than even the youth rally or the youth conference. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you give us as the church the ability to ask. In Jesus' name. Jesus, give him the praise. Let's respond to the Lord as fix our eyes on Jesus. All across his face. Will you close your eyes? Just lift up your hands. Let's respond to him. I just feel that there's such a such a spirit of love. Even as we sing that all our delight is in him. All of our heart and all our strengths. I just feel the Lord just wants to sing this back to you. Your daily is the light, the Bible says so. 
Let this be a moment right now where you're responding to him. Hear him sing this to you. Oh, 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 oh. 
not come to this earth to, to, to be served, but to serve. People, we shall come to God, not to serve, but to be served. God's heart is for you. God's possession is in you. Hey, the atmosphere of this place is changing. Is your heart broken? Bring it to God. God is healing. Is your heart in pain? It hurt. Turn to God. God is healing. Hey, is your heart, is your, your heart full of expectations? Full of, of hope in your breakthrough is not happening? Hey, God is doing something. the hill of Calvary and he has seen the land, the land full of milk and honey and he turns back for you and he says, child, it is good. Why is good for you? Because God, he goes to the promised land, God, God, God sees the good things, he sees what, your breakthrough in it, he sees your inheritance in it, he sees your possession in it and God turns back and he says, child, it is good. Child, will you take my hand? Will you follow me? There are people here who, who you feel that you cannot receive this because you have no faith. Hey, you listen to this word, it's crazy. You know in Mark, there was a man who had a son and this son was possessed for years since he was, since he was a child. And you know this man met Jesus for the first time. And you know what Jesus said to this situation? Jesus, Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes. And you know what? As the father, I would have been like, how can you say that to me? I barely just met you, how can you say that to me? And you know, I feel like there are some people here who have responded the same way that the father did. That guy said, you know what, Lord? Help me with my unbelief. And I just feel like there are some people here, when you listen to the sermon, right, they are just words to you. You feel like you've heard it all before, and you don't know why you came to camp. But you know what, right? You know what the meaning of belief is in the Bible? In that context, belief, it means to entrust. And to entrust, right, is a choice. Belief is not a feeling. Belief is not an emotion. Belief is a choice. And I see so many people here today who will choose to believe. When you go back to the same situations, Jesus will be there and you will choose to believe. And you know what? Make it as if you're meeting Him for the first time again. Like that man who met Jesus, Lord help my unbelief. You're meeting Him for the first time again at this camp and He's saying, you know what? Trust me. Trust me. It's a choice. And I will always, always accept that. So you know what? Why don't we just lift our hands today? And you know what? Let's entrust it to Jesus. Let's believe that every single name has to bow to Jesus. The one name, every name, every depression, every thought of failure, every fear has to bow to the name of Jesus. As long as he has a name, it bows to Jesus.
brought me back to life. Zon, I want to tell you right about the God who brought me back to life. Because in the month of March, right, I was sent to the hospital with a temperature of 41 degrees and a blood pressure right, of 60 instead of a regular man's 120. The doctors say that I would not have made it. The reports came in, right, and they say they do not know what is unwell. But they just know that my vitals are, are not looking good. They told me that they may have to open me up, right, put a camera in just to find out what's wrong. Right there, right there, in the ICU, I just felt like the Lord was there with me. And He says that I'm the God who has brought you back to life. Maybe you came to this camp and there was something in your life that looks dead. And through this camp, you just been hearing messages of dreaming again, hope again. And I just hear you saying like, it sounds too good to be true. But I'm here to tell you about the God that brought me back to life. I'm here to tell you about the God that has brought you back to life. That you were once dead, but He has made you alive. He, he brought you from the brink of death to life. And He has died your death. And the Lord says that He is the God who gives life to the dead. That He calls those things as they are even when they are not. I feel like right now, I hear the Lord saying this, that He is pouring forth His Spirit on His people. That His sons and daughters shall prophesy. That His young men shall see visions. His old men shall dream dreams again. If that is you, and you know that in this house, you worship a Father who has made you, He who has brought you from death, to life. He says this today. He's pouring forth His Spirit right now. I have got nothing for you but this. That there is a generation that He's prophesying in this place. There is a Joshua generation rising up in this place that will look the giants in the eye and say, I am not afraid of you. I know that you are more afraid of the God that I follow. I see a Joshua generation rising up in this place. A Joshua generation that does not know the word impossible. I see a Joshua generation in this place that knows that the God that they follow is the God of the impossible. So I just want to encourage you right now in this moment. I feel like the Lord wants to prophesy. He wants to prophesy over His people. And I want to encourage you that it's more than just about arrow. It's more than just about V. But it's about the Father right now prophesying over an entire generation. Can I just invite you right now to just pray in the Spirit? I see the living waters. I see the Lord just prophesying over this generation that there are Esthers right that is calling forth right now that there are Ruths in this generation that is calling to step forth there are Davids in this house that he's raising there are Davids in this house that he's raising there are Davids in this house that he's growing in the shepherding fields 
Oh Lord, just prophesy over your people. going to be a series of people who are coming up to just release their prophecies over your life, their your ammunition for your fight. And I just see right there, the Lord is going to speak right those dead areas to life. Let's just receive right. Let's just receive tonight. Amen. showing me discipline and anger in a way that makes me feel scared. Yeah. And like, at the session, right, like how the father just broke that for me, right, when, when I just thought about the memory and the father just said to me, you know, Belle, I'll not be a father that will be angry with you. I'll not be a father that will, will turn your back, 
turn your turn my back at you, eh? But I'll be your father, right? That will love and cherish you. I don't know, like, if anyone here today needs to hear this. But I just know this, you know, that because the Father loves you and His heart for you is abounding in goodness, right? You can be sure, you can be sure that, you know, the life of, the strategy of your life can be changed for good, for the better. Yeah. And for me, right, you know, when the Lord just broke that for me, right, I just feel like, I just, I just new sense of freedom. That I can go back from camp, right, knowing that I serve and I, have, I serve such a big and, like, loving God in my life. Yeah, so tonight, right, I don't know how you all feel thinking about tomorrow, like today's the last day of camp and like going back, right? But I just say, I want to say to you that, that you have a big God that loves you and you have a big God that can rewrite every single thing in your life. That you have a big God that can rewrite. Yeah, so today, you know, like, whatever it is, right, whatever that is in your life, if you want the Lord to rewrite, I just want you to, to just invite the Lord into that, that dark area that you want Him to rewrite. To rewrite the trajectory. Just thank you, Father, that tonight, for all the broken people, for all the broken hearts, for all the past hurts and pains and condemnation that we can't jump up all. Just thank you, Father, that tonight you are rewriting. And that you're rewriting your story of grace in our life. That you're rewriting the chapters in our life that, that are not pretty. And you're rewriting them, right? To see, you know, child, my son and my daughter, this is how I see your life. That your life can be beautiful that your life can be great only because I love you and my biggest dream is to make you happy and is to see you enjoying the life that I've made for you. Just thank you, Father, that just thank you, Father, that this house filled with sons and daughters who will rise up, rise up, who will rise up and take their call and live their purpose in life, right? All because they are a generation who knows a God who loves them. Hello, Amy. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm back away from varsity. Uh, and, like, you know, even just now standing there, right, as I was just praying for you guys, just asking Daddy God, like, you know, Daddy God, can you show me uh, how you see your people? You know, can you show me how you see uh, the people whom you so love, whom you say that are my sons and daughters? Daddy God just said, right, like, hey, my son, you know, how about you just remind them of who they are to me? Remind them of how valuable they are to me. Uh. Yeah, and, you know, for all of you, right, you know, I just want to let you know that uh, in your father's state, in your father's house, right, you always have a seat at the table. Yeah, because the word of God says that you are accepted in the beloved. Yeah, you are accepted in Christ. Uh. Yeah, and the truth is this, okay, that that you always have a place at the table. Yeah, you know, if ever, you know, we, we think that we, we, we leave the law or ever we think that we are straight too far, right? Know this, that when you come back, right, no one will be sitting at your seat. Right? Because that seat is specifically reserved for you, his beloved son, and that seat has your name on it. Yeah, you know, one thing I always share with uh, my care group, right, is I always tell them that, like, you know, to be honest, right, because you are a son, you are a daughter, you're perfectly approved by him, right? The truth is this, that, that even if you come in year one, you know, and you leave, right, and you come back year four, right, know this, that no one will take your seat. And when you come back, you know, spare the formalities, let's just continue. Because this is your father's house. You have a place. Uh, yeah. The word about says this, uh, you know, that he who did not spare his own son, you know, but He delivered Him up for us all. You know, how would He not with Jesus freely give us all things? Uh? You know, when I look at all of you, right, know this, okay, that Daddy God says, right, that you are 100% worth it, yeah, and you are 100% worth a future, a bright future, you know, you're worth every blessing that you can even name. Yeah, and uh, today I just want to take this chance to also just remind us, you know, that uh, although it's the last day of camp and we might be, we are going back to Singapore and all that, right? Know this, that when you go back, right, you have every right to involve the Lord. You have every right to speak to Daddy God in, in all of everything you want to involve Him in. Right? Yeah, because He loves you. And because 
you know, there is no more barrier between you and him. There's no more barrier between me and Daddy God. Yeah. Shall we pray? Come, let's pray. Let's close our eyes. Daddy God, we thank you for how much you love us, how much you're for us. And we just thank you for even now you're smiling over us. Your beloved, see Daddy God smiling over you. See him pleased with you. It is the truth. Yeah. Daddy God, we thank you for even the plans that you have for us. We thank you for your heart of, of, you know, of our Heavenly Father as our Daddy God. You know, and thank you for uh, the seat at the table that, that is never changed. Nah. Yeah, Daddy God, we believe right, that as we go back to Singapore, right, you know, like even if our circumstances don't change, we believe that we can run to you, we can involve you, and you will hold our hands and walk us through it, Lord. Yeah, Daddy God, you love us and you're for us, right? You know, and we are always precious in your sight. Yeah, you know, I want everyone to, to just repeat after me, okay? Yeah, repeat after me. Daddy God, you love me. You gave your son for me. You know, and you say that I'm worth it. Even I can't say I'm not worth it. And no one can say that I'm not worth it. Yeah, Daddy God, you know, you just bless us, you just love on us, right? You know, you just allow us to continue to cry out to you, Daddy God. You just love us so much. Yeah, and all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. washes your feet once, right, and then expects you to have it all together and, like, sends you out into the world just like that. But I just see that God is saying, like, you can always come to me and I'll always be here to wash your feet. Yeah, like, some of you, right, as you look down, I just see that there are some people who look down and all you can see at your feet are, are like, chains. Like, so much dirt. Crime. Yeah, like there's so much heaviness that's pulling you down, right? But I just sense the Lord saying that He wants to wash your feet so that you can step fully into your belovedness today. Yeah, and yeah, if you're feeling that way right now, right? Like if you're hearing this and you feel like this is for you, then maybe like there's just something holding you back, that there's a weightiness, there's a heaviness, yeah, like that. You know what you may be paid for, but there's still, there's still something, yeah, there's still something that, that's preventing you from walking in belovedness, right? Then, you know, would you just close your eyes and open your heart and, and like, raise your hands and, and just accept it, okay, as, as I declare this over you. Yeah, in, in, John, um, in John 13 verse 1, it says, All throughout his time with his disciples, Jesus had demonstrated the deep and tender love for them. And how he longed to show them the full measure of his love. Yeah, and yeah, okay, so just receive this, okay? The Lord says, as the water comes, as the water hits, as my hands touch your feet where you are sitting, every chain, every lie from the enemy, every disappointment, every condemnation, every illness, every disease, every shame, every doubt, every guilt, every hurt, yeah, just falls away into the waters of my grace. There is nothing you need to do but be still in my presence. 
you don't have to strive to, to like just shed this weightiness and this heaviness on your feet. But just let me show you how much I love you. Yeah, like let me show you how much I long for you. Right now, I just see Jesus standing before you. He's smiling at you so gently. Yeah, he's preparing a basin by your feet. Removing your shoes, removing your socks, right? And, you know, stirring the waters to life. Just see him laying his hands on your feet. Everything in your family that may have perpetuated like a generational curse, every like inch of dirt that the enemy might have laid down before your feet, right? Every inch of mud that you may have felt like you stepped into because of your own like bad decisions or bad mistakes and like you just... Like, you look at that mud and you regret it so much, right? And you don't know how to get it off. Like, the Lord reaches so low as you stand in His presence. Yeah, like, just so low. He continually just, you know, like, just washes your feet with water. Yeah, it's, this place is just flooded right now. And, like, only when every speck of dust is gone, does He dry your feet with the softest towel. Cause calls you to arise. Yeah, you will not walk out of this camp the same way you came. Tonight, every single one of us, right, we will walk in the fullness of His love. Yeah, and as that happens, right, like I just see a generation of people like walking out of Egypt. Yeah, like a generation of people. Yeah, just walking out of Egypt into the promised land that God has set set out for us. Yeah, like I see that. You know, the Lord is preparing your feet to step out of bondage into freedom, out of poverty into abundance, out of condemnation into righteousness. Yeah, I just see the Lord bringing you to a new place now. Yeah, like a new place that is filled with so much more of Him. Yeah, just receive it. Thank you, Lord, right, that you died on the cross for every single one of us. I thank you, Lord, that, you know, even before you went away to be with your Father, that you knew the best way to express your, the fullness of your love for us, right, is to simply to be with us, to let us, to let us have our feet washed, Lord. And I thank you that you are God that allows us to come back over and over again. And it's not just a today thing, it's not just like a moment thing, but it's a lifetime thing. Yeah, that you look at us through the lens of eternity, right? And you're always calling us to come home to you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. I commit every single person into your hands, in Jesus' name. And you know what? What, I, what the Lord wants to say to you today is that God chose to give you His best. And he always wants to give you your best. If you are his dream, it means you are his world. He will always give you his best. You know, God didn't give you a second rate Jesus to die on the cross for you, but he gave you his only beloved son. The son that he loved the most, not the son that he loved like the least, but he gave you the one that gives everything, he gave that to you. And I want you guys to know that like, if God will give his best for you, and he freely gave up the son and the one that he did not spare. How much more freely he will give you the things of your heart, the ones that you desire. The God given dream that you have, don't settle. Don't settle for any less. Don't settle for any less than God has promised you. You know, the greatest enemy of success is not failure, it's mediocrity. It means that the devil lulls you into a place where you feel comfortable in settling for something that you know is not what you're destined to be. And if God has called you to, to that place, God will be faithful to finish it. He who is promised to you is faithful. So can I get you guys to rise in this place? For those of us who who have a dream, or you felt like you're set up for something right now in your life, and you're not really comfortable in the place that you are right now, 
point to just lift up your hands and we're going to pray. Hey Lord Jesus, in your word it says that you who promised, you are faithful. And I just see that right now, the Lord is just saying to you that I who started the work, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I will put the end to the story that I started. I will be the one who puts the end to the story that I started. So don't end the, don't end the story prematurely when I haven't ended it yet. And he sees that your dreams, that the dreams that you have are the ones on his heart as well. And he says that he who promised is faithful. He who promised is faithful to carry through no matter whether or not you feel like there are roads and obstacles along the way that don't bring you to where you, you want to be, He who promised is faithful. And He will be faithful like the rising sun in the morning that rises every day. He will, be, he will constantly rise upon every single roadblock, every single obstacle, every single sunset you feel that, that is just bring you away from where you're supposed to be. But He who promised is faithful. So right now, Lord, you see these hands, you see these dreams on your heart, the ones that you have placed in your lives. And thank you, Lord, right now that, you know, you will promise you will walk them through it every single step the way He will never leave you nor He will forsake you. He will never give you anything more than you can bear and He will walk you through it right to the very end. And when you get there, you will know it's Him because when you look back, you'll see that there are two sets of footprints in the sand. And no matter where you go, you know that He's with you. I'm just going to seal this word over your lives right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And there are people here whose hearts have been so shattered to the point where you can't speak. So yeah, your heart hurts right to the point where you cannot. You're just there in your You don't look ahead, but you look up and you're like, God, why? And you can't, you can't even mutter words, you can't even mutter a sound, you're just so broken. Yeah, but can I remind you today that our God sees you as a priority? And what does that mean? When something is a priority, right, there are no shortcuts. It's detailed. There are no shortcuts. Yeah, there are no shortcuts. And our Lord says, right, that because I've loved you, there are no shortcuts in the way that I love you. There are no shortcuts in the way that I want to care for you. And what does that mean? You stand there and you say, Lord, I have a dream. Yeah, I want to I want to I want to preach. Um, I want to pray for that person over there. Yeah, Lord, take me out from this this feeling of like wretchedness. Take me out of this feeling of sorrow. Yeah, and I just want to go. I just want to go. Like, just get me away from here. And the Lord says, before you, before you reach out for that dream. Before you, I know it's a dream with me, and that's great, but before you, before you venture out, right, can you let me, can you let me be detailed, can you let me be meticulous in loving you in that moment? Before you, before you even think, right, of going out ahead, be like, yes, Lord, I want to go there, I want to go there with you. Yeah, yeah I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, this feeling, I, I'm so confused, I don't even know what it is. Yeah, I just, I just want to go. And the Lord says, can you, can you just stand there, right? With your arms lifted high. And just let me love on you. Because that is my dream. My dream is you means, my dream is that you're my priority. My dream is you means that, that every single feeling that you felt, right? That you feel, ah, I'm just going to throw it away. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I know the Lord has great plans for me. I'm just going to go. No way. God says that even in that brokenness, right? My dream is to love on you. Yeah, can you, can you give me that time before you step from there, right, up to there? On that steps, can you give me some time to hug you? Can you give me some time to just embrace you? I don't see a point, right, in, in, in you going there and being loud and being crazy for me when you haven't received the full revelation of my love for you. Yeah, before anything else, right, my love for you is so much more. My love for you is so much more than all the things that you want to run away from. That the Lord says right there, I am yours. Every single doubt, every single fear, every single thing that you want to change so hard for, right? All that matters is, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm your Abba and I love you. 
I won't take any shortcuts. I will go on that long journey with you just to let you know that I love you. I'll go back, I'll go forward, I'll go back, I'll go forward. It's just to let you know that I love you. Yeah, I'm not about that, that end goal, I'm not about that. I'm just here for you. I'm just here for you. And so as we, as we stand together, right, as we raise our hands, right, we lift our hands high, we abandon our own dreams. Just for this moment, we abandon our own dreams. We just let the Lord love on us. We abandon all of our... Our great dreams, yeah, we abandon them. We say, Lord, I just want to stay here with you. Will you let me? Will you love on me? Will you hug me? As I lift my hands up, I'm going to let you love on me. Now, right now, I'm going to lift my hands up and I'm going to let you take away, take away all that I think, I think I want. Yeah, but you know what's best for me. You know what's best for me. I stand and I lift my hands up because you know what's best. So right now, as we lift our hands, as we lift our hands, let's just let God love on us again. Abandon everything and let God love on us again.
loves you, will always run to embrace you. You're not a broken and forsaken generation. You are a chosen generation, the Benjamin generation, the generation that came forth when the Lamb died. Do you know that Benjamin was born when Rachel died? And Rachel means little lamb. Lamb. And the Lamb of God died to bring you forth. You know, you are alive today. You can chase your dreams today. It's a long time ago before you were even born. God dreamt of you. And do you know, if you are here today and you are alive and breathing in this place, you are His dream fulfilled. I want you just to do this right now. You know how to fulfill God's dream? Right now, close your eyes. See Jesus. See Him right now. I want you to call His name. Just say, Jesus. You see, you know what you just did? You just was conscious of Him. You know, the moment you, you think of Him, the moment you're conscious of Him, that moment is the best moment of His day. Every time you call His name, Jesus. Say, Lord, I am I'm here. You make God the happiest person. In Jesus' name, put your hand on your heart. Say, I make Jesus happy. Amen. Turn to the person beside you. Smile at him or her if you can see him or her in this place and say, you make Jesus happy. Say, you are his delight. You are his desire. Turn to someone else beside you, touch him or her and say, you are his beloved. Find someone else and say, every moment of his day, he thinks about you. He wants to be with you. Amen. Wow, so good. Man, I tell you, hasn't it been an amazing camp so far for us, huh? Come on, give Jesus the praise. Give God the praise. Wow. Have you made new friends in the camp? Have you? Would you turn to the person beside you that you're standing with and say, Hey, can I be your friend, really? Kingdom friend. <laughs> At least you made a friend tonight, okay? Hallelujah.